Hello, this is Nick Lycon from a and Machinery. In this tutorial, we will learn about the VersaLift 6080. We will cover the basic controls and operations, how we read the load charts, installing and removing the forks, installing and removing the boom, vertical functions of the boom and horizontal functions of the boom. This tutorial does not replace any training or certifications required to operate an industrial lift truck provided by your employer. Thank you. We are here with the VersaLift Model 6080. We will review the controls, the operating levers, and the location of the operating manual and load charts. You will find the controls under the waterproof cover. The parking brake, identified as the red button, is located on the top of the controls. The brake is applied when the button is pushed in and released when the button is pulled out. The parking brake is the only brake on the VersaLift. Everything else is done through direct drive hydraulic system. This knob is the travel speed control, which can be set high or low. This button is for the extending and retracting the counterweight. Another button here is for the lights that are located on the mast. This is the digital readout for the scale. We will review more about the scale later in the tutorial. On the instrument panel, we have the warning lights, oil pressure gauge, temperature gauge, tachometer, and the charging indicator. The start key and the throttle knob are in the bottom left corner. Please note that the VersaLift has a throttle switch and not a throttle pedal. The single pedal on the floor is used to move forward or reverse, and it also controls travel speed based on how far forward or reverse you depress the pedal. Press your toes to the pedal to move forward and press your heel to go in reverse. To start, you must turn the propane bottle on and turn the key in the bottom left corner of the instrument panel. Once started, you can turn the engine throttle with the throttle control. This VersaLift model operates on LP. Some models can run on gasoline or LP. We are connected to one LP bottle, and the second LP bottle here is a spare. It is recommended practice to flip the empty bottle upside down when it is empty. This lets the next person operating the VersaLift know that the bottle is empty. The scale must be reset when changing the forks or the boom on the VersaLift. To reset the scale, you must raise the forks or boom one inch from the bottom and then press the reset button. The VersaLift has a steering wheel like most industrial lift trucks with a steering axle in the rear. Let's review the levers on the dashboard. First lever is used to raise and lower the fork carriage. The second lever is used to tilt the carriage forward and back, and the third lever is used to extend and retract the boom vertically or horizontally. You can find the operating manual and the load charts in the compartment below the operator's control panel. The Versal F6080 comes with six counterweights or slabs that are located on the back. The VersaLift can also be operated with a remote control, and the switch is located on the dashboard. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will use the manual control. The load chart is mounted on the dashboard, and a paper copy is included in the compartment below the operator's control panel. The load chart shows the lifting capacities with different configurations. In order to know the lifting capacity of a given configuration, we need to know three pieces of information. The first is a measurement of the counterweight extension, and it can be configured at 0, 12, 24, 36 and 48 inches. The only way to determine the counterweight extension is by measuring. Never extend or retract the counterweight while loaded, as it changes the tipping point and counterbalance. 
You can risk losing a load if you attempt to extend or retract the counterweight while loaded. The next item you need to know is the load center. This is the distance between the load center from the face of the forks or boom, and it requires measuring. If you have a load that has a center of gravity positioned 24 inches from the face of the forks or boom, you will use 24 inch load center from face. The last piece of information you will need is the number of counterweight slabs. Depending on how many counterweight slabs you have installed in the Versalift, you will find the corresponding load chart. The 6080 has six counterweight slabs. We have three charts per page for each counterweight configuration. Use the top chart if you're using forks, use the center chart if you're using the boom, and use the bottom chart if the job requires using both the forks and the boom at the same time. Now we will demonstrate how to remove the forks. Ensure that you are on a flat surface and the forks are centered on the fork pins. Use the fork positioning bar to adjust the forks. The fork positioning bar is located on the side of the mass. Retrieve the removal wrench for pulling the pins. Start by removing the top bolt on the keeper plate and rotate the keeper plate to reveal the fork pin. The removal wrench has a threaded end which we will use to pull the pin. Signal the operator to adjust the fork carriage until the fork pin is loose enough to pull out. Warning, do not pull the fork pin beyond the side of the carriage. Once the fork is disengaged, the operator will lift the mast, then place the fork pin on the top of the guides located on the top of the forks. Signal your operator until you are positioned to reinstall the fork pin. Once the fork pin is reinstalled, rotate the keeper plate back to its original position. Reinstall the keeper bolt, locking the forks in place. Now we will repeat the same process for the fork on the other side. Let's review how to install the forks. Retrieve the removal wrench for pulling the pins. Start by removing the top bolt of the keeper plate and rotate the keeper plate to reveal the fork pin. Install and remove the wrench in the end of the fork pin. Signal the operator to position the fork carriage as needed. It is ideal to have a little pressure inward so the fork pin slides in smoothly when it is aligned with the fork and the inner carriage support. Rotate the keeper plate back into its original position. Reinstall the keeper bolt, which will lock the fork pin in place. Once the keeper plate is set back in position, move to the other side and repeat the process. Let's review the boom installation. The interlock must be slid all the way out to install the boom. We will discuss the interlock later in this tutorial. There is a connection point on the back of the boom and on the top of the carriage. This is the primary alignment area used to install the boom. The next step is to align the lugs on the bottom of the carriage and boom. The operator should visually line up the boom between the mast on the top as the operator is approaching the boom. Once the operator comes in far enough, signal the operator to come up and you will see the connection point being engaged. Once the boom starts lifting, tilt back, hold it there, install the boom lower pin before lifting the boom from the boom stand. Warning, the lower boom pin must be in place anytime the boom is being used. Once the lower boom pin is in place, go around and insert the safety pin and then lift the boom. Make sure the boom is fully engaged in the connection point and the pin is in place. 
Once you come off the receivers on the boom stand, you can back up. Now is a good time to review the interlock. When you are mounting, the interlock must be slid out. When you are connecting the hydraulics, the interlock must be slid in. This is a safety mechanism. The interlock will not allow you to back away from the boom with the hydraulic hoses connected. The next step is to connect the hydraulics to the boom. Whenever you are connecting or disconnecting the hydraulics from the boom, you must turn the Versa lift off and exercise the levers to relieve any pressure in the hydraulic system. These hydraulic valves are turned off. You must turn them on to operate the boom. Now we will remove the boom. Line up the receivers located near the end of the boom stand. Never remove the lower pin until you are fully engaged in the receivers close to the ground. Warning, a catastrophic accident could occur if you remove the lower boom pin before the boom is fully engaged in the receiver on the boom stand. If you are misaligned with the receivers, the boom could fall off the carriage. Always keep the lower boom pin in place until fully engaged in the receivers on the boom stand. The next step is to disconnect the hydraulics. The operator will turn the Versa lift off and then exercise the levers to relieve any hydraulic pressure. Turn the valves off and disconnect the hydraulic hoses. Slide the interlock pin open, lower the carriage, and back away from the boom. Now, we will look at how to extend and retract the manual horizontal boom section. There is a built-in step to get you into the location to extend or retract the boom. Remove the horizontal boom pin after removing the safety pin. Then you can manually crank the boom in or out. As you are moving the boom in or out, you must line up the hole and put the horizontal boom pin back in. Always have a safety pin in place when you are using the boom. If the handle is in your way, it's removable. Always extend the boom out the full distance when you want to put it back in the boom stand. We are ready to see the secondary manual horizontal extension on the boom. You will need a wrench and a ladder. Let's disconnect the next section of the boom. There is a pin, a bolt, a keeper plate on the side. This section of the boom is difficult to extend manually. That's why we will use a forklift to extend and retract it. Use a chain to secure the manual section of the boom to the forklift. You could also use a block of wood to assist. Remove the horizontal pins, pull the boom out, and reinsert the pins at the desired location. You cannot lift unless both pins are in place. Let's review how to install the extra lifting link that is stored on the boom stand. First, remove the shackle and install the lift link over the end of the boom. Reinstall the horizontal boom pins and the shackle. Let's review the vertical extension and retraction of the boom. With the hydraulic hoses connected, we can extend the boom hydraulically through its first vertical section by using the third lever on the dashboard. To extend the manual section of the boom, you will need the fork positioning bar and a block of wood. It is important to have a flashlight so you can see the connection point for the fork positioning bar. This bar has a keeper pin on it, which has a special shape to it. Raise the carriage and insert the bar into the manual section of the boom. Twist the bar 90 degrees so it locks in place. Make sure it's not tilted forward or back. As the operator is lowering the carriage, the bar is going to touch the block 
and the manual section is going to stay in place. There are two positions to install the rectangular bar that is stored in the storage box. Install the rectangular bar at the desired height of the manual section. Proceed to raise the carriage and remove the fork positioning bar. The manual section is now at a fixed height. You can raise and lower the load with the carriage and or hydraulic vertical section of the boom. Let's review how to retract the manual vertical section of the boom. Raise the carriage, insert the fork positioning bar. It is more difficult to put the positioning bar in place when the boom is already extended because the connecting point is located high up in the manual section of the boom. This is where a flashlight will come in handy. You have to make sure the boom is plumb and the bar is plumb. Proceed to lower the carriage with the fork positioning bar in place onto a block of wood. Remove the rectangular bar and replace it in its storage location. Raise the carriage to release the pressure on the fork positioning bar. Remove the positioning bar and lower the carriage. Remember, you cannot adjust the manual section of the boom under load. I want to talk a little bit about floor loading on the VersaLift. This VersaLift has 80,000 pounds capacity in a very compact frame. The weight of the VersaLift 6080 is 84,000 pounds, and you can lift 80,000 pounds when you are fully extended. 90% of the weight of the VersaLift and the load is on the front axle, on these front two wheels. You must be mindful about the type of floor you're on. You may determine that you need a metal plate on the concrete floor or asphalt, particularly on a hot summer day outside on the asphalt. Be aware of your surroundings and the environment. Take proper precautions for operating appropriately.